Hey y'all, it's Katie. Welcome back to From My Vanity. Today I wanted to talk to you guys about brushes and specifically makeup brushes that I use the most. Now I'm not going A to Z like every single brush that I use to create an eye look, which is my favorite brush. I'm not going that route because we could be here forever because I literally like to use so many brushes when it comes to my eye makeup. I'm talking specifically about the brushes where if I clean all my brushes, like deep clean them all, put them all back out, it's the first brush that I grab for and use when they are clean. It's the first First brush to get dirty so I thought it'd be fun to kind of go through and think like which brush when I see that it's clean I'm always like I want to use that over these other brushes and I grabbed them all out of my brush collection which you guys always see in my shop my stash videos I have many little cups of brushes I pulled all of them out and we're going to talk about them here today all right, so I figured we would start with face brushes just because I don't have as many face brushes as I do eyeshadow brushes, and we'll start with foundation brushes. Now, my number one all-time favorite when I just want to apply a nice, even layer, I don't want to get too much crazy coverage, I just want a very even and nice blend to my foundation, that brush is always the Smashbox Stippling Foundation Brush. I absolutely love this, and I don't even know why, but there's something a little magical about this. It's pretty dense, I think, for a stipple brush, and it's not like crazy stipple like they're not super long but there's still a lot of density there's a bit of a roundness to the edges which I really like I don't know there's something about this brush it just makes any foundation that I use that I blend this in with just apply really nicely really quickly really effortlessly and I just I love how it applies to my foundation I mean bottom line that's why I'm always reaching for this and it might be because of my preference when it comes to applying my foundation I'm not someone who likes to sweep I just feel like that just makes streaks and stuff like that and I, I don't know that's just not my preference I like to stipple it in and then kind of blend as I go I do like a mixture I don't know it works for me and this brush I just feel like makes that job and like my preference when it comes to how to blend my makeup so easy I've had no issues with this and I've owned this for oh goodness I think I got it right before Gideon was born. I got the scent from Smashbox. They gave me the whole line. I did do a review on all the brushes they sent, which I can leave linked up here. Um, I go over like pros and cons, my favorites, my fails, that kind of thing. And I have a whole little like Bath and Body Works candle. I have a whole jar full of foundation brushes, but this is my number one. I'm always reaching for it. Now, if I want a little more full coverage, maybe it's a sheer foundation or I just need more coverage in one area, there is another brush that I will reach for over my stipple foundation brush, but it is the Smashbox Full Coverage Foundation Brush. This is just like the perfect harmony of a super dense brush, but it's still diffused and it's like small. You know, it reminds me a lot of the Smashbox Expert Face Brush, except that it's more, it's bigger, so it makes the job easier, but has that same type of curve to the bristles where it tapers off. It just makes it very easy to put it on your face and kind of tap and blend out in circular motions, and because it's curved there, it just hugs the sides of your face. I like it more than my Sigma, what is it, Sigma F80 brush that everyone used to love. I just love this so much more. I feel like I can get so much more full coverage, and the tapered size, I think, really is what makes this brush so very special and makes me pick it over all my other foundation brushes in my little brush container. As I said, a bit bigger than the Expert Face Brush and I like how dense this is but I always hated how tiny it was because it just took a while. This is just like the perfect answer to what the Real Techniques brush always kind of annoyed me on but these two are definitely by far out of all of my foundation brushes, these are my faves. My favorite brush for blending out my under eye concealer has got to be the Sigma F79 Concealer Blend Kabuki Brush. This is just my favorite. I have probably four different type of brushes from various brands. I have one from Practic, one from Morphe, one from, oh, two from Morphe, and then one from Smashbox, but it's a bit different shape. But this is my favorite. Like this, there's just something perfect about this that I have not been able to find a cheaper, more affordable dupe. The bristles, of course, are super soft, but it's the blend, the taper to this brush, how small this brush is. Everything about this brush just makes it so easy to get right in here and just blend it out. Out. and it's just the perfect brush for me to blend out my under eye concealer. I feel like it blends everything out so effortlessly and so quickly and well and this is always the first brush to get dirty and even this is the one that I'm reaching for even though it's dirty it's just my preference so I always reach for it and I've been trying to find other brushes that I like as well but this is still my number one. So to set my under eyes I have been using this brush for like 
five, six years, it's the e.l.f. blush brush. Yes, the, their blush brush, but this is absolutely phenomenal for setting your under eye concealer and then just kind of using it to like flick stuff away too, but I like to take whatever powder I'm using to set my eyes and I kind of press it down this way and then I come back down this way and then after that I just kind of sweep it all away and that's how I like to set my under eyes and I feel like this does such a great job at getting in there. It's not too small that it takes forever to set my under eyes, but it's not too large where I'm poking myself in the eye or not being able to get right in there so easily. And like I said, this I think is like a three, maybe four if they've hiked their prices, but when I bought it, it was a $3 brush. I've owned it for at least four or five years. I can't even remember. It's still going strong. Every now and then with these black brushes, I get the, the ferrule and the brush, whatever these two, coming apart and I just put some super glue, stick it back in and it's still going strong, but I'm pretty sure I haven't had to do with that with this one. So this is just a, such a phenomenal brush. I ha Like I said, I have a lot of different brushes I can use to set my under eyes, but I always come back to this one and this is always my first preference if I am going to pick my favorite this is it. Then for setting my entire face, my favorite brush is the It Brushes for Ulta. This is their 127 Airbrush Mega Powder. I think they have a smaller brush that's more normal size, but I love the duo fiber aspect of this when it comes to setting my face because I find that I can very, especially for types of loose powders, like I'm thinking of the Cody Airspun, I can dip it in there and then I can stamp it on my face very lightly and then very lightly blend. And it's just been my favorite go-to for probably three years and it's just been a favorite ever since I got it. It's the largest brush in my collection by far, but it's a good brush and it's my favorite when it comes to setting my liquid foundation. Moving on to bronzer, I have really been into the Duo Fiber. I think I've mentioned this on my channel before, but right now my number one favorite is the Luxie 516. It's their Duo Fiber Powder Brush. This little guy right here, I should hold on this side. Easier for you guys to see. This brush right here is just so nice. It gets right in there because it's so small, but it still like has a flatness to it. It's really great at carving your cheekbones and you also don't, it's not too pointed as some duo fiber brushes can be. I have one from Stilazzi that I like, but it's a lot more pointed than this and I just don't like it as much. I feel like I'm more blending around instead of with this because it has more of a flatter cut to the top. I can kind of stick it right in here where I want to blend my contour and just really get focused in there while still blending the edges, if any of that makes sense. I don't know, maybe that's just something that I personally can see a difference between the brushes, but I have two of these types of duo fiber brushes, and I have a bunch of other type of contour brushes, but this is my number one, my preference when it comes to blending out my contour because it makes it so effortless. And the duo fiber aspect to the brush really changes the game for blending out my contour. If you've never tried to use a small duo fiber brush like this to blend out your contour, give it a try because it changed the game for me. For me, like doing contour, a lot of times I had to work to blend out the edges. But with this, like you really don't. It blends itself because I think of that duo fiber aspect to it. It's just, it blends so easy, so beautifully, and it gives your contour a much more air brushed look so yes definitely my number one when it comes to blending out my contour and for my bronzer, I also like a duo fiber. This is from Stilazzi. It's their S306 Duo Fiber Large Powder Brush. This, again, is a duo fiber brush, and it just makes it so easy to kind of hit the edges of my face and just lightly blend all around very lightly with the, with the tip of this brush, and it blends out so beautifully. Kind of the same stuff I said with the contour, except this is much easier at diffusing around your face. And it's just, it makes it so easy. I really don't notice any of those harsh lines that I could get when I would use regular type of like the typical type of contour brushes and whatnot. This kind of takes that away and ever since, I think the Tayla is who I first heard say that they used a duo fiber for contouring bronzing, I can't even remember. But ever since she said that, I was like, ooh, I have a couple of those brushes, I should give that a try. And ever since then, I have been using only duo fiber brushes for my contour and my bronzer. And then for a highlighter, this is my number one, and I have Angelica Nyquist to thank for this, but it is the Sigma F03 High Cheekbone Highlighter Brush. I got this in her set. She did a collab with Sigma and came out with a little brush set, and that's when I got this. I had been eyeing this for a long time, and since it was in her brush set, I was like, yes, I'm getting it now, and I have been going hard with this ever since. This is my number one when it comes to highlighter because it's so easy and effortless. The types of brushes I was using before this to apply my highlighter were either a fan brush or something like this which is a Morphe M501 brush but I felt like the tapered tip 
to it just made it very messy when you applied it because it just kind of like flung things everywhere. It was very pointy, so I don't know. It's just, it, it was nice, but I just felt like it would always get things messy and fling stuff everywhere. Whereas this, because of the, it's pinched here, it's very flat on both sides. It has a very nice taper to it. So what I do is I go into my highlighter from the side here and I kind of go back and forth like that and get it into the sides of these br bristles right here. And then I apply it like that and I kind of apply it in a blending motion, blending into my skin and blending it up back here and then just kind of diffusing the edges and I just feel like I don't get that like powdery puff everywhere and kind of get shimmer and highlighter all over my face like I used to with these types of highlighter brushes. This just makes it very easy and it really does a fantastic job of blending and meshing it into your skin as opposed to just fluffing it off everywhere. I hope that is making sense, but ever since I got this brush, like I said, it's been my number one. If I make another Sigma order, I do want to grab another one just to have another one in rotation because you guys know I don't wash my brushes very often, so that's why I have so many different types of you know brushes for each job. Over all the other types of brushes, fan brush, more dome brush, those kind of things, this has beaten all those out and is my number one. All right, now moving on to eyeshadow brushes, which we have a lot. So let's talk about blending brushes for the eyes. If I'm wanting something to kind of be the first shade to warm up my crease, the type of brush I like is more of a domed crease brush. And this one from Moda, this is the BMX 430 Crease Brush from Moda. And this is my number one. If this is clean, this is always the first brush I use. As you can see, it's stained because I use it so much and I've been using it for all the bright colors I've been using on my eyes in recent months. And it's just a phenomenal little brush. I've had no issues with the quality of it or anything like that. I got it in a BoxyCharm at the end of 17 and it's been going strong ever since. I actually just became a Moda Maven, like I got on the PR list for Moda. So I'm super excited to try more of them, but I just, I'm so excited because I feel like this is such a solid brush. I want to try more from them. The quality is fantastic and the price isn't bad either. So this has always been my number one. I also like how it feels. Like it's very NARS packaging-esque for the handle and it's just, it's nice when it's in your hands. I really like it. It's a very nice brush and it's my favorite. It's just so easy because of that nice taper it has to the sides and whatnot. It's not too pointy. It's not too big and fluffy. It just makes it so easy to apply that crease color and really get it well blended out and get the edges nicely blended out without having to struggle too much. So definitely my favorite. Something I've been getting a lot into recently is using a lot more tinier detail brushes because when I feel like when you use more color and you're using more intense color, you need those tiny little brushes to help you out. And my favorite really tiny type of blending brush is the E36 from Sigma. This can get right in there. It's dirty as you can see because I used it today, but it gets right in there and can just blend a color into your crease. I like to use it like today. I used a more pinky peach to warm up my crease and then I wanted to take a more of a red into my crease very minutely and blend that up into the first color to get a nice ombre and this type of brush is ideal for that and I absolutely love it. I have several brushes that are just like this. Um, I think they're from Stilazzi, from Morphe, and from e.l.f., but this is my preference because this just outshines them either in quality or in size or in like how tiny it is. I've been trying to find an affordable dupe for this to kind of really stock up because it'd be nice to have a lot of these on hand, but so far this is winning in the size of it, in the quality of it, and how it blends. It's just, it's my fave. Another brush that I really like to use in my outer corner to really blend things in is this Smashbox Contour Shadow Brush. It's a really interesting little brush. It almost looks like a flat shader brush, but it has a more blended tip. It reminds me of the popular Sigma E25, except with this brush, it's just a touch smaller. It's a touch thinner. There's just something special about it that I prefer this brush over this brush. And I reach for this all the time for specifically blending kind of things into my outer corner, up into my crease, and wanting to get a nice blend that I don't need a big fluffy brush, but I don't need anything quite so tiny as this. This is kind of a nice middle ground there to get some blending done, or if I need a little bit of blending and then packing, this brush can do it because it's got a nice little taper to the, the edges here that'll allow me to pack it on and then blend it out. But yeah, this little Smashbox Contour Shadow Brush, I feel like, once again, it's more of a unique type of brush. It's a unique style. I don't have many like this in my collection. 
that's quite so tiny and pinched at the ferrule. Again, it's like the E25 except just kind of like a better addition. It's more of my preference and I find myself reaching for this all the time. Okay, so when it comes to packing on shadow into my outer corner, there are a couple brushes that I really, really, really like. One of them being this Real Techniques shading brush. It's this little brush right here and it's a phenomenal brush, especially if you're looking for smaller brushes to help you pack on the outer corner. This brush is phenomenal because it can get right in there and you can just stamp on that color into your crease and then it blends very nicely and I just find that this is a fantastic brush for packing onto the outer corner and blending out. I think I have a couple of these, maybe two or three in my collection and I'm always reaching for these because they're just so, they're really easy to pack on. They're you know more of a detailed type of brush and I've just been really growing to, as I said, like these smaller type of brushes for my outer corner and really packing on and diffusing that shadow. Another brush, kind of the same purpose as the you know Real Techniques one, but this is from Smashbox. It's a full coverage shadow brush. I guess you could use it for all over your lid, but it is such a tiny brush. I like it, as I said, for packing on shadow on the outer corner and blending it in. I can do a little bit of crease work, but it is very dense, so keep that in mind. But my preference is for just packing it on my outer corner and blending it out. It just makes it very, you know, easy to do. One and done doesn't take a whole lot of blending or a whole lot of, you know, back and forth being super tiny. It's just the perfect size for my crease, and I absolutely love this brush. So next, for packing matte shadows into my outer corner. This is a brush that I love to use for really packing on that deepest color and really blending it up, kind of like how I have this purplish toned color here. And my absolute favorite brush for that is Stelazzi's L210, their flat dome shader brush. This brush is rarely ever clean in my collection because as soon as it's clean, I get it dirty the next day because it is my favorite for packing on shadow right there into the outer corner, really blending it in and then kind of diffusing it upward. It's so pinched at the ferrule and it's like a short, tiny little brush, but it still has a very nice blend or taper to the sides of the bristles. It just picks up matte shadow so nicely and packs it on there. It is a very, once again, more of a unique brush to my collection and I just feel like it does the job a little bit better than other brushes that I have in my collection and yeah ever since I got this from Stilazzi I basically use it non-stop if it's clean it's gonna get dirty very shortly Okay, so for cut creases, my number one brush that I love to use for applying my cut crease and either putting concealer down or something like that is this Olimar Cosmetics brush. I don't have the number or anything because all the information is basically worn off of this brush, but it's this little flat type of tiny concealer brush and it works so well. I just layer both sides really well with some concealer and then I can just lay it down. And because it has this kind of domed shape to the tip, it just applies and helps me cut the crease so well. If you watch a lot of my Instagram tutorials and if I ever do a cut crease in all the recent months at least going like three four months back this has been the only brush I use when I'm cutting my crease so to pack some type of shimmer or metallic or foiled shadow onto my lid, I love the Stilazzi Small Shadow L221 brush. I somehow got two of the same, these same type of brushes, the L221 brush, and I am always rotating those, and those, these two are always dirty. Like, they're the first brush that gets dirty when I clean my brushes because I absolutely love it. There's just something about this being so nice and tiny. It's really easy to get in there, but it's still got a great taper to the sides of the brush, so it's it picks up shadow, especially the shimmer and metallic and whatnot. It picks it up so very very easily, applies it nicely, but because it's not too fat of a brush, it can also be really great when you're placing it down over a cut crease and you don't want anything too fluffy and you know ruining your nice crisp line. I find that I can still get that really crisp line without making it fuzzy using this brush. So yeah, this is just a brush that I really like. I have a ton of brushes to apply shimmer shadow to my lid, but this is always my preference and like I said, it's always dirty. I'm sorry if you're hearing banging. We're having a lot of wind right now coming through the neighborhood and our for sale sign is going crazy out in the yard. Moving on to really tiny brushes, and these are it, so we should be almost done here. Um, let's talk about if I do gel liner. Now, I don't do gel liner a whole lot just because I have liquid liners in pen or those type of, uh, you know, my NYX matte liquid liner, whatever that is, a little inkwell. I have those, and those just make it so much easier for me now, especially being a mom. Using a gel and a brush just take a little more time, but when I am in the mood, the only brush I ever use is the Sigma E06 brush. This as you can see, is a super tiny brush, but the thing I love about it is that it is, has a slant to it. It is so skinny and so tiny, it makes it very easy to line the eyes, but because it has that little slant to it, that little angle, it also makes it extremely easy to get a really nice precise wing, flick it out, and because, I don't know, it's just, it's a phenomenal brush. It does, it's not too flip floppy, because kind of an issue with the typical type of gel liner brush to use is that it's just a long, really tiny, thin brush, and I feel like it flip flops everywhere, but because 
because this, while it's still tiny, it has that little angle to it. It makes it really easy to, apply, you know, put it right there on your eyes and bring it back. It doesn't flip flop everywhere because it's short, precise, and that angle to it is what does the work instead of just having this really tall, skinny, little pointed brush that when you try to lay it down, it just bends right over. I hope I'm making sense with this, but I have bought so many type of liner brushes because I used to be huge into gel liner. Uh, I've bought so many of them to try to find the perfect brush, and this has thrown all the other ones into the water by far. I think I own like three or four of these, but yeah, this is a phenomenal brush. If you are someone who likes gel liner, check out the EO6. Okay, so moving down to my lower lash line, I like smaller brushes because if I get too much shadow in my eyes, I can really have issues with my eyes watering up. So I try to use really small brushes to prevent that. And one of my favorite kind of larger type of blending brushes is these Luxie brushes. Um, these two are kind of interchangeable just because I don't see a huge difference with them, but one is the Luxie 111 and one is the Luxie 141 brush. We got them in a boxy charm in a, like a pack of four. And, you know four different types of brushes but these two I feel like do basically the same job but it's so easy I use this blue one as you can see I use this today and it's just so easy to like place it under here but still blend it out but not be so big I'm stabbing my eye getting eyeshadow in my eye or you know just aggravating my eye I can keep it right down here and it stays out of the way and just blends it out so nicely and effortlessly and as I said these two came in a set and I feel like there's not a huge difference this has a bit of an angle to it but when I'm using it for my lower lash line they both do the same thing. These two are great. Another brush that I really like to use that's even tinier than those is the Sigma L04. It's a detailed lip brush, but this little guy is really great if you need very precise work done right at the lower lash line and it just gets it very precisely but because it has that dome shape it still blends a little bit so if I'm wanting to like smoke out my lower lash line let's just for the sake of simplicity say I'm doing a you know I take a warm brown and I smoke it out down here but I'm wanting to get some black right next to where I have you know black in my waterline I'll take this little brush and just do it right along the edge and it just makes the most gorgeous ombre from like my waterline black you got a little bit of shadow black and then the brown you know blended out and underneath it so I love this tiny little brush to to get right there on my lower lash line and really blend it out so that's a very seamless type of blend and it's small enough it doesn't aggravate my eyes and it's a phenomenal brush I never use it as a lip brush it works for my eyes and very last step, we're gonna talk about the e.l.f. Concealer Rush. This is my number one when it comes to applying my inner corner highlight. I see a lot of YouTubers use these type of little dome brushes. And while this is still tiny, this is too large for me. Again, I cannot get eyeshadow into my eyes because if I get too much in there, they'll start to water and ruin my entire look. So I'm always trying to be super careful when, especially in this part in my lower lash line, of not letting eyeshadow get into my inner corner. So I need something like this tiny little concealer brush. And I just use it in a pack on the shelf shadow this way I blend it upward and I blend it over and I can still get that inner corner light to really finish off a look without messing up and getting all the shadow into my tear duct or into my inner corner and making it all water and just ruining whatever look I've just created. This has definitely been like the biggest help when it comes to preventing my eyes from watering is to use this brush for my inner corner. Yes, it takes a little more time than something like this, just kind of packing it on and being done, but it saves my eyes from watering. So it is worth the extra step. It's worth the hassle. And if you're someone with super small eyes, this brush might be really good for you to even, you know, put on your lid and whatnot. I've definitely used this to apply my you know lid shadow as well in the past depending on if I just want a little bit right here blending into another color. This is really nice to pack it on and just get right in there. Very detailed work. Yeah this is a brush I feel like you can use in so many different ways on your eyes but for me personally I use it as my inner corner highlight. I think I have like three or four of these and I'm always getting these dirty because this is my number one when it comes to applying my inner corner highlight. I love this. All right, so there you have it. I really hope I haven't forgotten any brushes. There is a lot of pressure right now as I am looking around at my brushes. When I was going through my brushes before, I was like, what if I forget like my most obvious favorite brush? So please bear that in mind if you're like, well, Katie, where's this brush? Do you hate it now? Definitely let me know that down below and I can let you know if I just simply forgot it. But also keep in mind that these aren't just my favorite brushes out of my collection because if I was naming all my favorites, we would be here for probably double or triple the time that we are today. I'm just specifically going through the brushes that I reach for over all others. And if I had all the brushes that does this one job laid out, these are the first brushes I would go for. They're just something about them that makes them a little more special, a little more personal. I just like a little bit more than all the other brushes. So that is what we're talking about today. My most used makeup brushes. So I hope you guys enjoyed it. Let me know what you think down below. Did I introduce you to any new brushes? I would love to hear that. And if you have any other recommendations, also leave that 
down below. You guys know I love my makeup brushes. I don't need more, but I'm always looking for more. So there's that. But anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed hearing this. And I hope it was in some way helpful or informative for you guys. But yeah, with all that said, thank you guys so much for watching. And I'll see you very soon in my next video. Bye, guys. Bye.